Hello all, good morning. I'm sorry, I had some issues with Microsoft Edge. Now I have tried Chrome and it's just working now. <laughs> so hopefully we are going to finish this chapter slide today. So I hope everything is going great with you. And now, yeah, let me just confirm that we are going to attend on Sunday, inshallah. So Sunday, there will be a quiz also, an online quiz. Since some students are going to attend on Sunday, so they are um, encouraged to bring their PCs or laptops in case they want to um, do the quiz um, there in, the, in campus or in campus. So yeah, it will be the last uh, maybe 20 minutes or 15 minutes of the lecture timing. All right. So yes, for next Sunday, let me just write this in the chat box. We are going to attend on Sunday, 13 March. Okay, there will be on campus lecture. Okay, you are to bring your ID. Don't bring, don't sorry, don't uh, forget to bring your ID, ID card, or any identity, or maybe CPR. Okay, anything with a, with a picture. Okay, and uh, please don't forget to to wear a mask. All right. Plus. Um, bring a PC if you, for example, prefer to do it in any lab, but there will be no time, so you are encouraged to bring your PC for the quiz. All right? Okay, so let's finish this chapter slide about the attendance, guys. Um, I have noticed that in online online lectures. Uh, the attendance is, see, the attendance rate is very low. And for all those students who are not attending this lecture, um, be careful because if the absence um, percentage becomes 15 to, 20, to 25 percent, there will be a first warning sent automatically by the system to uh, the student. And uh, if it exceeds 25 percent, there will be a WF. Okay, so be careful, guys. Try to uh, attend the, this lecture. So don't, you know, just don't uh, take it this um, like no importance matter. It's very important because attendance matters. It, there will be no marks over attendance, but it will affect your um, status in the university. All right, so previously in this uh, like in this chapter slide, we have discussed the relational model. We said it includes a number of, uh, it's, it's, it means number of relations, including number of columns and rows. And then uh, we have discussed the mathematical relations, then the keys or the relational keys uh, we stopped in set of integrity in this concept right set of integrity constraints we said before i will repeat this because it's very important how many parts of any data model there are three parts right we have discussed the structural part and that was what anyone can remind me structural part what is included how we can say what is the relational element that will define the structural part of the data, which will be fixed. Structural means what? Anyone can remember? So previously we have discussed this. Structural part is, yes, yes. Yes, exactly, Qasim. It's the DDL, but in terms of relational model, what is it? The description of the relation structure, right? 
the relation structure, the attributes which are fixed, right? So relation, relation structure, attributes, and their domains, right? Attributes and their domains. Okay, so this is the structural part. Secondly, manipulative part. Anyone can tell manipulative part in terms of relational model, which can be changed over time, which can be changed. What is that? The? For example, we can add, we can delete, we can... Yes, Abdul Manan, it's DML, but in terms of relational model, what is it? The relational model, which, which part of the relation can be updated, can be manipulated or modified? Which part of the relation? For example, when you want to add a new uh, item, for example, in the relation, what is that? What we call it? Tu <laughs> Tuples, right? It's can be updated, updated and changed. Okay. How about set num number three, set of integrity constraints? Constraints. How about that? Uh, yes, domain can have some restrictions. That's correct, Qasim. It has uh, some restrictions, uh, like, for example, limiting number of characters accepted. Um, so set of integrity constraints can be general constraints or restrictions over data. So domain, domain restrictions can be counted as well. But there are two, two main. Something related to the primary key and something related to foreign key. Okay, and that is uh, uh, what we have discussed ent entity integrity and referential integrity. These are common set of integrity constraints. Okay, so entity integrity has something to do with the primary key, referential integrity uh, with foreign key. All right, now let's move to that part and let's discuss it. Let me just move to that slide. All right. So as we said, as we said, we mentioned previously, there are two roles or principal roles for the relational model. Number one, entity integrity. Number two, referential integrity. All right. So entity integrity, we said it's about primary key and referential integrity about foreign key. Other types of um, integrity constraints, something uh, can be related to multiplicity or the relationship, yani the relationships among these relations and some general constraints like the domain, as your class fellow Qasim said or mentioned, the domain can be also counted as some restrictions. Now, uh, the term null can must be understood first before we go through these uh, constraints. Null. What does it mean? Null. When a value, <coughs> sorry, when uh, there is the absence of value, okay, or value, or the value is unknown or not applicable for this cell, unknown or not applicable, this is something we call null, okay? So null is not a zero. It's not zero okay it's not spaces all right yeah spaces and zeros are values but null means the absence of value okay it's not applicable yet it's not it's unknown yet all right so when a tuple or a cell in a tuple includes null for example if we write null in a cell that means that it's unknown yet. 
it's not completed. All right. So something to be completed in the future. This is null. This is the term null or the, the this concept means the absence of value, not not zero or spaces. Okay, if I say, it, for example, in true or false, null, exactly, Qasim, this will be discussed after a while. So, integrity, um, which related to, which is related to primary key, must not be null. The primary key must not be null. This is the first rule. In the relation, the primary key value must not be null. This is the first one. Okay, so null, you know now that null means incomplete data. It's not a zero or a space. It's just the absence of value. It means it's unknown or unapplicable or not applicable yet. All right. So entity integrity, number one, entity integrity means in a base relation, and I, I'm going to discuss the definition of a base relation after a while. In a base relation, no attribute of a primary key must or can be null. It must not be null, okay? So any primary key value must not be null. So you can rephrase it also. You, you don't have to uh, memorize it as it is. All right, so entity integrity, as you understand, you can say, for example, as uh, Qasim said, uh, primary key value or attribute of a primary key must not be null. That's correct. Okay. So, or alternatively, you can say no attribute of a primary key can be null. It cannot be null. You can rephrase it. How about number two, rule number two in a relation? We know now the primary key must not be null. Okay. How about referential integrity, which is, uh, which has something to do with the prime, with the, sorry, with the foreign key. The referential integrity in a, a foreign key exists in a relation, either foreign key value must match a candidate key value in some tuple in its home relation, or foreign key value must be wholly null. See here the difference? Either it's, it must match the values in, a, in the home relation, which linked to primary key, right? It must match the primary key values or it must be wholly null. In case it's not matching, it's not matching there. There is no value or unknown value in the primary key uh, data. The foreign key in this case must be wholly null. Yes, until it's uh, updated there, right? Uh, until there will be a value in the primary key value, then it will be automatically updated as a foreign key. Got the point? So entity integrity in relational model, okay, we will represent any attribute as a, uh, any primary key attribute, which cannot accept, uh, sorry, which, which cannot be uh, null, all right? Which cannot be null. In the entity integrity rule. The referential integrity, any foreign key, any foreign key value or attribute, the value must match the, the data or the tuples or the value of the tuples appears in the home relation or the primary key attribute. It must match it. Otherwise, it must be wholly null. All right. Here also you can rephrase it. For example, for this I'm not sure if they gave uh, here. Uh, for example, let me go back to that slide, which includes that. Yeah, this is it. See, for example, here we have we have this branch number. This one, it's a foreign key, right? And the branch number in the branch relation is this one. This one, it's a primary key. Okay. Now, let me apply the rules now. How we can apply the rules here? For example, if there is a value, if there will be, for example, for the staff, a new staff member, but it's not 
it sorry the stuff the stuff member will be will belong to a branch which is not added to the branch relation yet it's not added yet okay a new staff member he will be for example um a head of the, uh, the branch or a department in a branch which is not which is not uh the data which is not created yet all right it belongs to a relation which is not created yet for example or record for example for example let's assume that we have b008 all right are you with me b008 and the stuff is for example okay uh, let's take the name for example abdul mannan yes b003 is not a no I, I mean see here i mean that something is not is not existing in the branch relation so for example let's assume abdul mannan is the new head of the department of branch 008 okay abdul mannan so you are the head of the department you need to your data needs to be as added to the stuff relation right but still b008 not added yet okay b008 is not added yet so what we need to do here we still can add your information in the stuff relation right stuff number first name last name position and so on and so on tell the branch number as a foreign key what we need to do here if b008 is not existed in the branch relation Ha, Abdul Manan, can you answer? What we need to do in the branch, in the, sorry, in the staff relation, in branch number value. What we need to do here, based on the rules, the referential integrity, referential um, add it in the branch, yes. Uh, yes, Qasim, we are, we are going to add it anyway, but till we are adding it, till, till that process uh, will be done, in the future, for example, what we need to do here, we added added the, the information for Abdul Mannan, staff number, first name, and now branch number is not there. <clears throat> B008 is not added yet. Okay, the street, city, postcode, it's not added yet. So what we need to do, can we, for example, type here, can we add it here? Can we say, for example, here, when we add Abdul Mannan here, can we say we are going to add B008 here? Can we do this? And it's not there? We cannot do that. What else? What, what we can do here based on the rules, based on the set of uh, integrity constraints, the referential integrity? What we need to do here? We can just have what? What? Null. Null means what? the foreign key we can use null because if this data is missing in the home relation okay not added yet we can have null in the foreign key okay till it's added then it will be updated automatically right correct got the point so this is this is this is what we mean by referential integrity it must match it, this this branch number in the staff relation must match branch number in the branch relation. It must match all values. All values here must match the home relation values. But if there is something missing in the home relation, the branch number, like B008, for example, not added yet, then it will be what? Null. Till it's enter there okay null means what unknown okay or not completed the absence of value there is no value yet okay you got the point got the point easy or yeah all right so uh, can we say here for example can we say here can we put here here can we put null 
in the home relation in the primary key can we do that no it's 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 breaking the rule right it's not acceptable it must not be null okay the value for the primary key attribute must not be none so this is incorrect so in this case in the foreign key we can say that but in the primary key we cannot do that okay i mean in the foreign key, we can do that in the, in the primary key we cannot do it it must not be none okay so let's move to the slide Okay, now there are some uh, general constraints and general rules. Uh, like, for example, uh, it's it's uh, related to the domain. It can be, for example, like upper limit is 20, for example, or limit the number of characters. Okay like number of characters okay. and so on so these are general constraints what you need to focus on are two the entity integrity and the referential integrity all right other other than that it's general general constraint that can be applied and some rules uh, can be, for example, specifically um, designed for particular users. All right. OK. For example, the, the salary limit, the salary limit for employees must not exceed a number, for example, while for managers, it can exceed numbers. OK, like that, some general general constraints that can uh, be applied over particular users all right now views uh, views we have discussed this before who can tell who can tell me what is the view if we said we mentioned before every user has his, his own view based on his requirements right so we give example also, we said you, in the University of Bahrain, students' view will be different, okay? And the staff view will be different, right? Okay, Qasem, what do you mean? Physical, something, and logical and conceptual. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can say there are different types of view but now we are just defining views okay let's talk about external yeah and conceptual so a view here in terms of relational model a view is a relation or virtual relation in terms of we said we mentioned the definition of view in the previous chapter slide we said the view is a customizable way okay of the data that can be presented based on each user requirement right this that was the definition of the view but in the in terms of relational model we can define it as virtual relation uh, sorry we can define it as virtual relation all right it does not really exist it does not uh, necessarily exist, but it can be produced upon request. Okay? Produced upon request. Like, for example, you're um, in the University of Bahrain. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. You remember that? Age. Age is all students' age ages all right so it will be it will be calculated based on your date of birth all right and then it will give me your id your name and your age for example this relation is not really existed okay but it will be created 
based on my request. All right. So this is the meaning of the, the view or virtual relation. Now, um, for example, you uh, you are adding courses, right? How you can get your timetable? Your your schedule. It's it will be based on your selection, right? You are adding courses, you are dropping courses, right? So your timetable will be your view. It will be different. It's, it will not be similar to other students. Am I right? So it, it depends. It depends on your selection. It's not really existed in the database. You are requesting it. Correct or not? Your timetable. Every semester you are adding and dropping courses. Right? So you are getting these data from the home relation, the courses. You are getting all these data from different relations. All right? Now, so even <laughs> the view is what? The virtual relation that's produced upon your request. It's not necessarily to be existed in the database. Now, it will be um, derived from something we call base relations. As I told you, your timetable will be derived or it will be take, the data will be taken from different relations student relation, courses relation, okay? So what is the meaning of base relations? These are base relations. It's a named relation corresponding to an entity in the conceptual schema, okay? This is the, the, the definition for the base relation. The tuple are physically stored in the database. The tuples are physically stored in the database. So this is the base relation. It's like any relation, any main relation, like students, like courses in the University of Bahrain database example. Okay, so student re relation is a base relation because it's a name relation. It corresponds with an entity. The entity is a student, right? It corresponds with an entity. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, in the conceptual schema, and it's stored physically in the database. Your name, your ID, your major, your every details about all details about student will be stored there. Like for example, courses as well. It's a base relation. Why? Because it's a name, a name relation. It's named as courses. It corresponds with what? Oh, sorry, correspond to the courses entity in the conceptual schema. <clears throat> sorry, and all, <coughs> I'm so sorry, and all the tuples are uh, stored physically in the database. It's not, it's not like a views or virtual relation. The base relation is main relation stored physically in the database. Okay, so the view can be derived, <clears throat> can be virtual relation derived from a base relation. That is the main point here. So it's dynamic and uh, <clears throat> just a minute. So as we said, it's dynamic. Um, any changes made uh, to base relations, okay, it will affect that effective view attributes are immediately reflected, okay? So any changes will be reflected in the view. Any changes in the base relation, for example, um, your information is updated in the base relation students of the relation, it will be reflected in any view you are requesting. All right. Um, all right. So it will be including, or it can, the model can consist of both base relation, conceptual level relation, and views derived from the base relation. So there are two base relations. The external model will be including base relations and the views. So a views are essential. OK, the views are very essential. Not only the base relation, or not only the relations, the main relations, also uh, the views which are derived from this base relation will be also uh, provided. So there are so, so many benefits of having views. There are, uh, it's, it's powerful. It's, uh, it will provide flexible security mechanism. Uh, how is that? 
you mentioned that before, I remember some of you, you said uh, some data will be hidden from some users and others will be unhidden, right? So this is exactly the main point of having views or the main objective of having views. It will hide some amount of data from unauthorized users. For example, my salary, okay, my uh, job title, my all information about me. You are not aware because what? Because your view will hide, will hide all these sort of data, right? So it will, this is uh, some, this is a benefit of having views. It, ha it provides, yeah, exactly, Qasim. Uh, we discussed this, uh, yeah, before. So it will provide a mechanism of uh, security, hide some parts of the database from certain users. Uh, yeah, let me just, let's say this is benefit number one. Okay, uh, benefit number two, we have also permits users to access data in a customized way. So it will provide some customizable tools or not customizable, uh, yeah, customizable interface. So some same data can be seen different users in different ways at the same time. Okay, it will be seen by different users at the same time in different ways. Number three, it simpl simplifies the complex operations. And three is not <laughs> looking good here. Okay. Number three, it, it simplis, simplifies it. It simplifies the complex operations. It makes it easier to have some operations uh, by, for example, calculating the age uh, from the date of birth. Okay. Um, it should be designed to support the external model. Okay, and all the users will be familiar with it. So this is uh, also another benefit. Support the external model. And you will find it familiar. All right. Then some examples here for views. Um, as I mentioned, I mean, some number of staff, my my information will be hidden from you from students. Or here there are some examples. Uh, some members of staff should see staff tuples without the salary attributes. Even me, I cannot see the salary of other uh, faculty members. Okay, only for example, head of the department or dean are authorized users to see or to look at this information or even the admin, the HR. Yep, exactly, the administrator. Okay, so this is uh, some, some, um, in some aspects in every department, the head of the department or the dean are permitted users or authorized users to look at these, this kind of data because of the, you know, if there will be an upgrade or something, uh, a step added to an employee or something, they must be aware. All right, so some members uh, cannot see salary attributes. Uh, also, some attributes can be or may be renamed or the order attributes is changed. Okay, uh, this will not uh, be uh, it will not an, a big issue. It will not be a big issue. Okay, so it will be just renamed and uh, and change in this view. It will be reflected. Some members uh, should see the property records, for example, that they are managing, not other properties. Okay, just the properties they are managing. This these are just examples. Okay, uh, what else? Number five. Uh, number five, 
the uh, views will provide logical data independence. You know that data independence means it will separate the data definition from the structure, is the data model structure, which makes it easier to update. So anything changes in the, in the base relation, uh, all users of these views derived from the base relation will, will not be aware uh, that it's defined or changed, okay? It will not show them that, oh, this is this is change and that is uh, remain the same. Okay, so this is a data independence actually feature. Yes, it will not be um, affected exactly. But in, in case something in their views are changed, it will be reflected automatically. For example, new attribute is added to a relation. They are not aware. The user of this view will not be aware um, if it is existing. If the views are defined to exclude it, but if it is included, they will be aware. And if it is also rearrange the relation, rearrange, split up. It must be defined, so they cannot uh, see any difference. They will uh, resume having or working on their views as they can see it, as usual, or uh, the original views will not be affected if the, the existing relation is rearranged or split it up. Okay? For example, courses. Your, uh, your courses or the college courses or the department courses is is, is uh, divided into two relations, for example, or it's, it was like data is added. So you are not aware in this case that it's it becomes different internally, all right? Your view will uh, be displayed the same way. Uh, all updates in a base relation should be reflected, as we mentioned. Any update will be reflected in all views. If it is updated, um, also the base relation must reflect the change. If the view is updated, okay. So all updates in the base relate to the base relation. All updates to a base relation is, uh, for example, uh, you updated a record, okay. It must be updated also in the views, any corresponding views, and vice versa. If the view is updated, the base relation will reflect the change. It, it works in both ways. But there are some restrictions for the types of uh, modifications here. Updates, you need to know updates are only allowed if it involves a single base relation. If there are more than base relations, updates will be um, uh, will, will not be allowed. All right, any updates will not be allowed. So it must be only single. It contains a candidate key of a base relation. So they are not allowed if there are multiple base relations and not allowed if they are involving aggregation or grouping operator operations. If there are, uh, for example, uh, some complex mathematical calculations. So it's only allowed, the update will be allowed only in one case. If the query or the view, query means uh, it's, you know the, the meaning of the query? What does it mean? It's the view, same. You are requesting a query or request. You are requesting something and it will bring you the view. All right. So the query will build up the view uh, or the, the relation based on a base relation. It can be updated or the modification is allowed or updates are, uh, updates are allowed only if it involves single base relation only. It's not allowed to uh, update a view involving multiple base relations or involving aggregation or grouping operations. Uh, there are classes for views. We have some classes. 
number one theoretically not updatable it's, it can be defined this way the view some some views are theoretically not updatable or theoretically updatable or actually updatable so it, it depends on the update state all right theoretically not updatable or theoretically updatable or partially updatable so that was all for the, for this chapter slide you have any questions any questions guys do you have any questions or is, everything is it clear guys everything is it clear i have some um some you know some information for this chapter slide also for the previous chapter slide i'm gonna put the supporting material or i'm gonna upload the supporting material on blackboard so yeah perfect okay so that was all for today thank you so much for coming sorry for attending i'm gonna say this next week thank you so much for coming i like you 